Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Buckeye Weekly Podcast. I am Tony Gerdeman here, as always, with Tom Orr. Tom, how's it going? Tony, it is, as always, because we're here for our Wednesday Bold Prediction Show. And yet again, I am the reigning champion. No. As, as, as always, the last two times we've done this. I don't know if you're yet again the reigning champion. I think for the first time you're the reigning champion. Is that correct? So this you've won two weeks in a row. Mm-hmm. So okay, I guess if you do that. But yet again, I mean, I think the yet is a bit much. Once again, <laughs> technically still too much, but mathematically correct. Yes, Tom won last week. Yes, I did. Uh, I had to stay on the couch of shame, the kind of shame. Yes, it pretty much sucks. Um, but we will go over these quickly, just so everybody knows that this is somewhat on the up and up. I can only speak for myself when I say that, and I don't want to speak for Tom with his bold predictions that <laughs> came true. Um, so I'll just run through mine, and then Tom, you can run through yours and, and show everybody why you won the score should, do we even give the score right now should i oh i think we should let it be a surprise but we'll just i mean we'll let you start because it won't take as long to go through your correct ones as it will for me because I, no. I had more correct ones that, that's slightly correct yeah so um let's see i uh i had ohio state will have a 50 yard completion that did not happen what was the long completion of the day it was 32 yards just ridiculous horrific I said a Buckeye scores his first touchdown of the year. That did not happen. It could have happened, but it didn't. It should have happened, but it didn't. <laughs> Travion Henderson has at least two 20-yard rushes and one of 15 or three of 18. He did have the two of 20 and one of 15, so I got that. Did, that he, one, did he have the three of 18 or just two of 20? No, and- one was 17. So. Oh, man. Um, I, let, I so, let you off the hook on that one. Oh, please. I let you off the hook on at least three of yours. Uh, Steel Chambers has 1.5 impact plays, at least 1.5 impact plays, which was, you know, tackle for loss, a sack, a forced fumble, a fumble recovery, or an interception. He had that on one play with a forced fumble in the backfield. Uh, which, you, which you texted me about, but because the cell for service in Bloomington God. is apparently from 1993, I got it in like the fourth quarter, and I'm, I'm looking at my phone like, <laughs> what? When, when did that happen? That was, what? I didn't, he's not, he's not, he wasn't even like on the field in the last 10 minutes. What are you talking about? Yeah, cell service was horrific. The internet service wasn't much better in that game. My last one-pointer, OSU will have a 106-yard rusher and receiver. That did not happen. Jackson Smith the Jigbo was at 99 yards. Travion Henderson was at 91 yard, 81 yards. And had they actually needed to play two and a half quarters, I would have gotten credit for that one. I, I'm going to let it slide for now. <laughs> But how I noble of to, you to let yeah, how noble of you to let it slide that the thing the thing you said was gonna have two things were gonna happen and none of them happened. And then my I'm two glad. point bonus was uh mm-hmm. somebody other than CJ Stroud throws a touchdown of more than 20 yards, did not happen. Three pointer. The OSU defense and special teams outscore Indiana's offense, allowing me to uh, take one field goal from the Ohio State special teams. The final score in that game was Indiana's offense seven. The Ohio State special teams and defense five. And had they fallen on that botched punt rather than taking a safety, I would have won this. I would have gotten my three points and um, the audience would have been much happier. But, Tom, what did you do? Uh, I won. Thank you for asking. Uh, So the first one was that Travion Henderson has more than twice as many rushing yards as Stephen Carr, Indiana starting running back. Won that one easily, 81 to 13. Stephen Carr, like, never got going. Uh, the most Indiana has been outgained by uh, that season was 1.23 yards per play. Said OSU triples that, outgains by 3.75 yards per play. Did that again easily, 7.8, 2.4. Uh, five of the first six Ohio State opponents have passed for more than 200 yards. Indiana finishes with less than 197 yards passing. And I uh, got to tell you, a little nervous about that one after the first drive, and then uh, and then Indiana was done, and they finished with eighty. So, um, I did not hit my uh, my white whale 
the the one that I always always want to do: two hundred and twenty yards rushing, two hundred and twenty yards passing. More than more than enough on the uh, passing side, rushing only one hundred and eighty seven yards. Which, to your point about uh, if they had actually needed to play the second half, like yeah, they would have they would have hit that one easily, but they didn't. Uh, Ohio State defense scores points. No, they got a safety, but it was on special teams, not on defense. If there had been a Ohio State defender who picked up that safety instead of Marvin Harrison, what I have been arguing for it right now, possibly. No uh, way. <laughs> Indiana does not score t- a touchdown in the red zone, and Ohio State scores a touchdown every time they're in the red zone. Indiana scored their one touchdown in the red zone. Ohio State did kick one field goal in the red zone. So did, that was my two-pointer. And then Emeka Egbuka returns a kickoff for a touchdown. And, man, there, he only had two tries. And the uh, the uh, free kick after the safety, like he's running. I'm like, my first thought is, oh, my gosh, he's going to do it. And my second thought, like even before he was down on the ground was Tony is going to be like, no, this is a free kick. This is the kickoff. So that doesn't count. I hated you even before that play was over for something you hadn't even done. So but, and, and, and tell, tell me you weren't going to do that. Uh, well, it just depends on we would have had to have gone back and listened to the wording because if you, if you would have said kickoff return. <laughs> then obviously you would have been wrong. But if I had said kick return, then it would have been right. Yeah. I mean, he returned a kick, right? I, I, I love the Talmudic parsing we have to do on this show every mm-hmm. single week. Mm-hmm. And for good reason, there are very high stakes mm-hmm. and my back is still feeling it. <laughs> As the champion, do I get to go first this week or do you go first? Go ahead. Go, go first. Um, what happens when we pick the same one? Um, is it whoever goes first? I, I think it? I think we I think we need to negotiate. Okay. Because because uh, Tony, 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 it's gonna happen. Tony, no, it's gonna happen. No. Uh, two hundred and twenty yards rushing, two hundred and twenty yards passing for the Buckeyes this week. I don't think you should be able to be allowed to use <laughs> the same one two weeks in a row, especially when I have that as my my, my number two. And this is for the, this is for the, this is inherently bold because it never happens, or at least it never happens for me. It's happened once this year, and it was the one week that you picked it. So. How about this? <laughs> well, see, here's the thing. If you take it, then I'm going to have to come up with another one. Well, which I'll, I tell can you do. What, I'll tell you what. Hmm. Uh, we, we need to auction this. Okay. <laughs> Are we both willing to go 225, 225? I am. I mean, Illinois rushed for what? Like 400 yards against Penn State last week? And passed for 38, yes. Are, we, are, you, are you really comparing... <laughs> The Illinois passing game to the Ohio State passing game. Is that what you just did right there? It sounds like that's exactly what you did right there. I mean, if we're talking about last week's game. So is that a no? You will not be willing to do 225, 225? So if I go, so, okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, do, no. do, you need me, do you need me to remind you how many yards Illinois rushed for last week? Was it like 397 or something? I don't know. I don't know. You, you just said the number. and I wasn't really paying attention. My, yeah, my brain it, it was just a lot. Filters you out. It was a lot. It was a bunch. Sorry, you're right. Free. Ohio State doesn't have a Chase Brown on the roster. <laughs> um, I I will go two twenty six, two twenty six, two thirty, two thirty. This is going to be terrible. It's going to be an hour and a half <laughs> of just us, like one yard. Um, so you're well, going to go two thirty, two thirty. I think we need to go in five yard increments. So I'm going to say two thirty, two thirty. All right, Tom. I will give you two thirty, two thirty. You know, we know what's going to happen now. They are going to hit 220, 220, and they're not going <laughs> to. Um, 230, 230. That gives me a little bit of time to come up with something. But, you know, the two, 230, 230. Penn State loses, uh, has lost very good defensive tackle that has hurt their run stopping. Ohio State has Travion Henderson. You would expect him to play more this week against a, a tougher opponent. And it just there will be more opportunities to run the ball with him. And as long as he's running the ball, you've got some opportunities. So, you know, we'll go ahead and I'll allow it because it has never happened for you. Should I have said it, then we probably couldn't allow it because it always happens when I say it. So that is pretty I don't like the fact that we could say the same thing and one of us is more bold than the other. Like I well, say two twenty, two twenty, and it, well, that's one hundred percent always happened. You say it, and it's and it's never happened. Well, you picked you picked that for the Akron game, which I mean should have its own asterisk. And you know, we we were not negotiating back then; we were auctioning at that point. So I had to just let you have it. So really, okay. all right. Well, here's really, my I've been robbed here. Oh, oh, really? 
Yes, this is a you. You are such such a victim, and I feel terrible for you throughout all of this. It's a, it's a shame that you even have to be subjected to this kind of harassment and, and such. So my first one, did you want to? I saw you wanting to chime in there. Did no? I'm just getting, gonna just gonna say agreed. Go ahead, <laughs> agreed. My first one, Ohio State will rush for at least 5.9 yards per carry in this game. Now, they've only done that twice this season against Minnesota and against Akron. They have only done it once in four Big Ten games this year. We know Penn State has one of the best run defenses in the nation. In fact, I will tell you exactly how good they are. They are. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop you right here because OSU is averaging 6.2 yards per carry this season. Right. One of my one point bold predictions is they beat that by at least a yard per carry over the first three quarters. 7.2 yards per carry over the first three quarters. So if I'm going 7.2 yards per carry, mm-hmm. I think 5.9 is insufficiently bold. They've only done it twice this year, and they haven't done it in their last three Big Ten games. So, so do I get like three points for picking 1.3 yards per carry more than you? No, you get uh, one point for. Go, going bold. We're supposed to be bold. In fact, Tom, <laughs> let me just start off. Re, let me restart this show. OS, OSU, I'm just going to remind you, OSU is averaging 6.2 yards per carry this year. Mm-hmm. But they've only done that in two game, in, in three games, one of those being Akron. So they've done it against Minnesota, Akron, and Tulsa. So, so your bold prediction is that OSU is going to average 0.3 yards per carry less than their average against a team that has an interior defensive tackle out. That's your bold prediction? My bold prediction is that they are going to average at least 5.9 yards per carry, which is something they have not done in their last three games against lesser opponents. Webster's Dictionary defines the word bold as not that pick. You're, I gave you Stephen bold. Carr. I gave you in, Stephen Carr uh, and, and all of that stuff last week, trying to be kind. <laughs> my, my days of kindness are over time. Here's something else I figured out through this. By me not getting picks correct and having to negotiate through all of this tells you that my original picks were plenty bold. They were exactly bold. Your negotiations have made them too bold. This is your fault. I have, I I should not have to negotiate my predictions because they're sufficiently bold as proven by the fact that I up them a little bit and they don't come true. That is on you, Tom. I will tell you what, I'm going to meet you in the middle here. You can have 6.5 yards per carry for the full game. I will take 6.9 yards over the first three quarters because I do think in the fourth quarter, you may have a bunch, you know, some shorter runs as it gets, you know, it is this more obvious passing situations. So 6.5 for you for the full game, 6.9 for me over the first three quarters. Does that sound nice? No, it doesn't sound nice, Tom. I will take 6, 6.0 even. That's as far as I will go. They have not done it in a month. And you're saying that uh, it's not bold. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stand firm on this. <laughs> okay. So then I get 6.4 then for no. my first Why? three quarters. Why? <laughs> you should have to stick with you. you what would you say? 7.2 through the first three quarters? Yes, because I'm actually trying to be bold. I'm not trying to pick them to do something less than average. <laughs> this is not less than average. This is, less, this is more than they've done in their last three games. It's better mm-hmm. than they've done in their last three games. And you do pick average. You did it last week. But then you challenged me. You made me, ch- you made me change it. So this is, I will go 6.05. <laughs> Not a foot higher. And I will let you go down to six, seven yards for three, three quarters. 6.4. 6. 6. No, 6.1. That's it. And I will let you stay at 7.0. <laughs> So, okay, so you're taking 6.1. I'll take 6.5. No, for what? No. 6, 6.9. We'll leave it there. 6.1 li- through all four quarters for me. Mm-hmm. 6.9 through three quarters for you. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, if you get this one, just know that you have absolutely, this is, this is the one I'm going to let you slide on, but your, this pick is nonsense. Absolute nonsense. It is not nonsense. It is bold because they have not done it. They've only done it once in four Big Ten games. That's, mm-hmm. I mean... I don't define bold a lot because we all know the meaning, and this is bold. So what I six point one, and you are six point nine through three quarters. That's not very bold, Tom. What's your next one? Penn State's season low in passing yards is one hundred and sixty-five. Mm-hmm. Okay, if you prorate that across three quarters, 
three quarters of that is 124. I, I think you're going to maybe have some garbage time stuff here in the fourth quarter, maybe playing some backups potentially for Ohio State. So three quarters of their season low in passing yards is 160 is 124. They will be held under 124 passing yards through the first three quarters. Hmm. 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 So you're saying talking like 40 some yards passing a quarter. Now the Ohio State pass defense right now over. I mean they gave up 80 last week, Tom. So you're saying. Yes, well, Penn State actually does have a quarterback. It's not a fantastic quarterback, and he's not perfectly healthy, but they do have a quarterback. That's about the perfect description of Sean Clifford. He is a quarterback. So you're saying 120 what? 24? 124 through the first three quarters. I'm kind of worn down from that first negotiation or that second <laughs> negotiation. I don't remember what it was. 124. Through, I mean, see, this is the problem with the, your, your bold predictions. This looks like it's going to happen to me. This I would say I don't want to keep negotiating, and this is how this is how I wouldn't storage wars. This is how you win the locker, and I'm just like you know what? I don't I don't even have the energy anymore. Then you're just always, like, oh look, we found uh, there's a Chinese vase in here, and boom, that, that will only cost us fifty two dollars for this locker, and I feel like this is this is not just a vase, it's a vase, <laughs> one twenty four through three quarters. I mean, to me, that's going to happen. I mean, that's that they will be held under that. So I would need 108. I mean, 108, 116. I'm, I'm, picking, I'm, each in the I'm picking them to be have lower than their season low. You've got to think that Sean Clifford's probably a little healthier than he was last week. You have to think that they're going to be right, down. Well, they're going to have to throw the ball. So. You know what? I mean, I'll go. I'll go 124 with the thought that you know what? Maybe he doesn't make it through the first quarter, first sec, second quarter, and then um, bad and things. And then Taquan Rupperson comes in, and, and and same thing happens at last happened light, last week. Lights up the shut down. No. Yes. All right, Tom. Um, I'm. I am just. <laughs> we were talking this earlier this week about uh, we're, we're going to have to do just continue to do bold prediction shows throughout the year for like everything, and <laughs> I don't know if I have the energy for that. We, we do this show one day a week, and it just it saps the life out of me. Unless I win, then it's like, yes. But, of course, that hasn't happened for the last couple of weeks. So it's, um, you know, it, it is what it is. And you know, I'll get over it. I, I still have to come up with a fifth prediction since you um, outbid me on the 220-220. I will eventually get there. My, is this my second one? My third one? How many do, time do you got? Your, okay, but you 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 skipped one ahead of me, so you've got three. I've only I have one. three. Yes. Okay. Okay. So my second one, Denzel Burke will have at least two pass defenses. He's got six on the year. I'm saying he will have a PBU and an interception, or two PBUs, something like that. Um, it's not something uh, you know that uh, he's. Let me see here, Denzel Burke. Six passes broken up, one interception. So he's averaging one pass defense in each game. So I am saying he's going to double that. And one of the reasons I think that is, remember on Tuesday when somebody mentioned like, oh, matchup of Jahan Dotson and Denzel mm-hmm. Burke. And I was like, ooh, that, I like that. That sounds fun. Mm-hmm. And so um, this is just a happy prediction. It's like, let's see it. Let's let's watch a couple of competitors go at it. Wouldn't be surprised Jahan Dotson gets you know 125 yards receiving in the first three quarters but then you've also got denzel burke who knocks a couple of passes to the ground this is this will be just a fun battle to watch what do you think this is one where i'm going to allow it because of the fact that it's double what he had been averaging previously however it also seems extremely inevitable because <laughs> it seems like they're going to be they're not going to be able to run the ball they're not going to be able to throw. I mean, they don't have a whole lot of other playmakers in the past game. So it feels like if they're going to move the ball, they're going to have to like force the ball into him. And Denzel Burke's probably the guy who's on him. And they're probably going to have to try and force it, even if there's tight coverage, which means that's going to lead to a lot of, of PBUs or uh, interceptions. So I'm going to allow this in the spirit of uh, the spirit of holiday giving, even though it feels like it is really inevitable that that's going to hit. Thank you for confirming my boldness. 
I appreciate it. Uh, should I go again here to catch us back up? Sure, to go ahead. Yes. Uh, this is going to be one I'm just coming up, coming up with right now. So um, you may not like it. <laughs> Here's my bold prediction. That's true. Penn State will be held to a season low total offense in this game. And then if you, if by say 15 yards, what is last, week, what was, is... last week was their season low at 227. So I'm saying 212. What did Ohio State hold Indiana to? 614. <laughs> I don't think that's actually correct, but I'm going to just double check your math here. Um, that was 128. <laughs> yeah. So, but 229 to Akron. Uh, so there's this fourth quarter that we have to figure in as well. Mm-hmm. So, so would you like is... to? Would you like to do a uh, first three quarters? And you want to? You want to give me? Uh, the Indiana total, 128 yards through the first three quarters? No, 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 no. Because Indiana, once Jack Tuttle went down, they couldn't move the ball. Uh-huh. You would need, you would need <laughs> Sean Clifford. Friends, to, friends, let me tell you about the Penn State offense this year. You would need Sean Clifford to go down to be that bad. Indiana offense had no choice, no, no, no options, no chance. Um, no, I'm going to stick with 300 yards total offense for, for, for Penn State in this one. <laughs> you don't, you Good news. My first bold prediction of the week has already come true. <laughs> I think uh, this terrible offense that can't run the ball has maybe one playmaker and has a banged up quarterback okay. is going to score have less than 70 points this week. So um, I said uh, 212. So let's just say, how about 175 through three quarters? <sighs> About 140 through three quarters. 158. 148. 160. <laughs> That's not how negotiation works. 148 it is. You lose. Um, okay, I'll go. Uh, how about 152? <sighs> Fine. Through three quarters. I like how this show is just turning this brutal war of attrition every week. It's, it is it is brutal. I And surprisingly, we do get good feedback i don't know if we've done so much <laughs> lately because it's gotten so bad but um this is are. this is a very high stakes week because next week is the nebraska trip which is oh. a longer trip so there's more time on the cot slash couch of shame so this is this is a particularly high stakes week for this now i am even angrier <laughs> all right your turn all right ohio state has given up an average of 3.2 yards per carry this year they give up a half yard less than that per carry against Penn State on Saturday, 2.7 or less. 2.7 yards per carry or less for a Penn State team that has been held to that mark how many times, Tom, this season? I don't know. Uh, well, 2.1 last week, 2.35 against Villanova, 2.7 against Auburn, 2.7 against Wisconsin. So I'm going to need that to be at least, I might give you 2.3 because you're asking, you're saying something, they're going to do something bold. They're going to do something they've done four times in seven games this, this season. And Ohio state has a better defense than most, certainly Villanova. Jay Wright. Jay Wright has them, has them playing, playing well. Get matchup. So I'll, give you, I'll give you 2.2. <laughs> Again, you are moving in the wrong direction. You you said two point three before. Did I? I'm sorry. Yes, you did. So you you probably two point one four. All right, two point two point five. I will take. <laughs> no, no, because they've done two point five um, twice. So I will give you two. Point- how many? How many times did uh, Ohio State do the thing that you said on your first one, uh, averaging yards per carry? I think you said it was twice. They'd only done it twice, so therefore it was bold. So I think therefore. Mm, Good. Boom. Lawyer. 2.5 or less. Next. I don't like having my own words used <laughs> against me. That is not what this show is about. 2.5. Okay. It seems, a lot, it seems a lot less bold, but it's the other person, doesn't it? Like, it's like, I never thought this that. would happen to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Your next, your next one. The defensive ends will have more sacks than the defensive tackles in this game. We know the defensive tackles have way more sacks than the Ohio State defensive ends. So in this one game, 
doing something I don't think they have done all season long. The defensive ends will have more. Did I say tackles? I meant sacks. You um, said sacks. Okay. So uh, I, if, if you didn't say sacks, you meant sacks. I can tell you. That's what I thought I heard. Okay. So defensive ends, more sacks than the defensive tackles. We know that the defensive tackles are, I think, the top three sackers on the team. Uh, and then you've got Jack Sawyer and Zach Harrison. And then JT Tui Molowa is coming on, but they have not all put it together in a game yet. And so I am going with the defensive ends finally do it this week, do something they have not done, I don't believe, all season long, which would mean this is the first time in history this season, defensive ends with more sacks than the defensive tackles. Tom, what do you think? This is another one that's like, this is all about how you're, this is all about how you're framing this because it's like, Defensive ends pretty much always have more sacks than defensive tackles. Like it's very unusual for defensive tackles to have more sacks than defensive ends. So it, this feels real inevitable that this is going to happen. And this feel, I, I think one of the things that uh, I'm counting on in my uh, not giving up a whole lot of yards per carry is they might get a whole bunch of sacks because Penn State's offensive line is not very good this year. And I think if you're getting, you know, if you're at six sacks or something like that, it feels like that's going to be more ends than, than tackles at that point. So I, I'm going to allow this. I don't even know that it, it doesn't feel bold, but I guess because of the framing, I'm going to, I'm going to have to let you do it. Is this one of those where you're angry that you didn't come up with it? And so you just, yeah, a little bit, you want to put up a fight, <laughs> but you're like, you know, I wish that would have been me. And so yeah. I understand. I completely get it. So what is your fifth one pointer? Uh, Travion Henderson's second highest rushing total this year was 102 yards against Maryland. He beats that by 20 yards. So he's 122 yards rushing or higher. And this is another one where it's, it, it, it's very much in the spirit bold. of the last one where it is right. technically bold, but feels. Yes. It feels like he's averaging 122 yards rushing this season. It, yes. And, and it feels and he's, like he's he not. would be if he gets, it, this is, this is almost more of a, I think Ryan day will let Travion Henderson play more than he has in any game, except for one this season. That's kind of what I'm kind of what I'm saying here. Yeah. And, and I agree. And yet um, I need to disagree a little because <laughs> here's, and, and, and again, this a credit to you for doing the research to come up with stuff that hasn't really happened much. And then, because as with mine, a couple of mine, you're like, this is going to happen. It just feels like it's inevitable. And then I let you have it. And then here, what are you about to say? But yeah, because it hasn't happened, you know, you're like, well, okay. And so I absolutely think Traylon Henderson is probably going to better that number by 30 yards. But if you're saying he's going to have his at least a second highest total ever by 20 yards, or, you know, whatever, beat that second. I can't go against that just out of the, the courteousness of me, the, the spirit of the game, the length of the show to this point, and, and, and su- such things as those. So you're saying at least 122 yards rushing? Is that what it was? About 122 yards or higher for Trevian Henderson. And that seems like it's easy money. That's like, you know, that's... Ohio State minus 16 at Nebraska in 2019 or whatever it was. It's just like, give me it. But hey, like Vegas threw, Vegas laid the line out there. We just took advantage of it, you know? So I'll tell you what, if you want me to go to 132 or higher, then the defensive ends have to beat the defensive tackles by more than one sack. Stay out of my predictions. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm perfectly willing to go a little bolder, if you will. I'm already plenty bold. If you feel guilty <laughs> about the lack of boldness of your Travion Henderson prediction, that's on you. You're telling on yourself a little bit right there. So if you would like to take that a little bit bolder so that people aren't in your mentions telling you what a coward you are after I say, hey, isn't Tom and I at you such a coward and you don't want those responses and you want to make this, you know, 152, uh, go ahead. My bold prediction is I know where the mute this thread uh, function is on Twitter. So again, not a bold prediction. <laughs> Good job, Tom. Okay. I will allow 122 just out of it, the, the definition of it and the, the, the lack of frequency of it happening this season. So, Good job picking a good bold prediction, a likely bold prediction, if that's not actually an oxymoron. Te- technically bold is the very best kind of bold to be, in my opinion. <laughs> that is absolutely right, Tom. Great point. So here's my final one pointer. 
a non bullet defensive back will have an interception in this game for the Buckeyes. Non bullet defensive and back. I did not even realize. Maybe I missed it in the game. Like Craig Young had two interceptions a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, um, yeah the, at the, they were both right at the end of the Maryland game. Yeah, so I, I must have missed one of those. But, you know, Ronnie Hickman, Craig, Craig Young have four of Ohio State's nine interceptions. So take them out of the picture. Take Court Williams out of the picture. I get everybody else in the secondary. Now, what does that mean? That's three total interceptions this season. So they've had three interceptions in seven games. I'm saying somebody, not a bullet, somebody in the secondary has an interception in this game. And I know you're like, but that's, that's not bold at all. However, it hasn't happened much. If, uh, and, and I'm sure one of these Cameron Martinez, Ryan Watts, or Denzel Burke interceptions, all, one, two of those have probably happened in the same game. So if we base it on that probability that I cannot confirm. I then, don't think then, that's true. <laughs> Cam Martinez had a pick six against uh, Tulsa. Denzel, Denzel Burke, Burke had a pick six against Rutgers. Ryan Watts, his interception was against. I, I wasn't one of them. This has him, this has Brian Watts with two. Rutgers. Rutgers. Okay. All right. Um, see, I feel like the danger zone from he me here is that I think they're going to be throwing in Denzel Burke's direction for all the reasons I discussed earlier. Mm. So uh, I would give this to you if you remove Denzel Burke. Or if you either remove Denzel Burke from this or the interception that he gets does not count towards your two oh. interceptions slash PBUs. You can't double dip on that one. Mm. So he could have two PBUs and an interception and that would st- you would still cash the other one. But if it's one PBU and one interception, you can only pick one of them. I would actually feel better about removing him from the interception thing. As long as with your Travion Henderson 122 yards rushing, you remove Travion Henderson. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough no. but fair yeah <laughs> I, I will remove D- denzel burke from the interception okay equation. okay that's okay. fair fair enough good yep agreed <laughs> boy you sure agreed quickly there anyway. well i just i think it's a little it, it prevents you from having one play completely yes a non-bullet slash burke defensive back okay mm-hmm. all right so okay. those are our five now tom we've got two bonuses what is your first two-pointer Three different Buckeyes go over 100 yards, either receiving or rushing. That has only happened twice this year, Oregon and Maryland. But in order to make it two points, I'm going to pick two of the three people, and then the third will be a little bit of a wild card. Travion Henderson, Jackson Smith, and Jigba. And then Chris Lave or Garrett Wilson or Marvin Harrison Jr. or Mayan Williams, whoever the third is. But three will go over, which has only happened twice, and mm-hmm. I'm giving you two of them. Plus, so you've already... If it happens with three people and it's, you know, one, it's not neither Harrison nor Jackson Smith and Jigba, then I don't get it. I'm okay with this. You have, um, you've missed this one before without naming names. Mm-hmm. Um, now, Travion Henderson is kind of, that's a given. That's going to happen. And so really, you just need jackson smith and jigba to be one of those three receivers one of those two receivers and the way he's going right now you know but still only 99 yards receiving last week it would have been like 150 had he played the actual entire game so this is another one time i mm, this feels more like a one pointer but once you start naming the names that's where yes that's, even though that's the names I... are like yes we know those are the names like of course Trib- and so how about 106 yards from at least two of those? <laughs> 106 yards from at least two of those. I had to go up to 106 yards last week. All right, then that's fine. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, okay. So, man, this I'd be, I'm going to be sitting here typing out this whole thing. I'm going to just put this on mute. So you're going to have to talk. Okay. I'm going to type this out because this is going to be a long very legal uh <laughs> legally <laughs> written might have to get this, this one notarized so you go ahead with your next one i'll, I'll, okay. I'll write this out I, I don't want you to be on mute though because i want to hear you yell uh, uh, expletives once i give you my two pointer which is and listen people for him just shaking his head and sighing osu will hold penn state to less than 16 points in this game uh, nonsense 
come on no. oh 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 they're gonna be better than than illinois in 19 overtimes last week how bold penn state has only been held under 16 points once in the last five years that's over in, 50 games in, no yes they no. have no <laughs> no so uh, no no uh, that is the opposite of bold if we did half point bold predictions i, I would i would allow you that one for half points they haven't it's been done once in five years and i think it was 2018 against michigan no. you, you don't you don't get to technically bold in the del- in the two or three categories no mm, mm. no fair no 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 that is a fair point i i, I will I, I have an extra one here that i will i would be willing to give you for your uh for your um two-pointer if you'd like travian henderson averaging 8.8 yards per carry Noah Kane is averaging 3.1 yards per carry. So he's outrushing him by 5.7 yards. Flip those digits. He outrushes him by 7.5 yards per carry or more on Saturday. That, that would be a, I would give you, I had that down as potential two pointer. I would let you take that one for a potential two pointer. Don't you dare ever try to give me one of your <laughs> predictions, Tom. I take your predictions. You don't give them to me. If I want them, I take them. Sometimes. You get to predict them first, in which case I, I, and then we bid for them. But don't, don't you ever, ever. Or I will, I will, I would also allow you to do the three Buckeyes over 100 yards, rushing or passing, you're rushing or receiving, take, you know, 106, two of them have to be 106. No, I'm just going to, I'm just going to lower Penn State score. <laughs> Under 15. No, no. How about this? Under ten. I mean, I'm. I think under that's, seven. You, you want me to keep them out of the end zone? Is that better? Under seven, yes. Under seven, I will allow. Under eight. Under seven. All right, it's Again, a two pointer. I you're terrible. Under- at, you're terrible at negotiating. So you've you've taken ten points off of this thing from the outset, and this is part of my problem with this entire show. I have already sufficiently. Something that has happened two percent of the time, less than two percent of the time, in Penn State football over the last half decade, and that's not bold enough for a two pointer. I'm, I'm going back to look at what the Penn State Illinois box score regulation score was because uh, it feels it like if it, 16, wasn't it 16? it was ugh, stupid. The entire game was stupid. I hate everything. I thought it was fantastic. Uh, it was. Was it ten ten? No. 10 10 it was 10 10 at the Mm -hmm. end of regulation so frankly i feel like seven is insufficiently bold 10 points in regulation against illinois who we've already established arguably not as good as ohio state this year okay so six points Uh, hold them under seven basically okay that's fine this is this is this is the easiest two-pointer i think we've had yet oh i think you just had that one that feels pretty inevitable again if you'd like to trade two pointers, I- I'm happy to trade two pointers there. My- mine is significantly more difficult than yours. Tom, what is your final three pointer? My three pointer. <clears throat> Ohio State has currently holding. It's tied. It is lo- its longest winning streak against Penn State at four games. They've won those games by combined 26 points. This week, they beat that combined total by at least seven. So they win by 33 points or more. I can't argue with that. That's. That's good. That's that's a three pointer. That's something that I think we both know can happen for sure. And yet, you know, it hasn't happened to this point and doesn't happen often. It does happen sometimes, but 33 points. Okay. I will allow that. Now, if if you're going to let me add on a bonus to that, on top of winning by 33 points or more. Penn State fans come up with elaborate conspiracy theories to explain how they actually should have won if the game wasn't stolen from them. If both of those happen, parlay five points. What do you say? No, no. What if no. I tell you which message board it happens on? Do I get any bonus points then? In fact, you lose bonus points. That's mm. where things start to mm. your three point <laughs> bold prediction come down comes back down to one because that's like a that's like a tackle for loss when you mention any Penn State message board. So I'll, I'll allow that three thirty three point win for Ohio State which they have been doing on average every game. But that's neither here nor there, apparently, Tom. Penn State is not Rutgers. 
Penn State is not Akron. I mean, how many times has Ohio State and Penn State, how many times has Ohio State beaten Penn State by 33 or more points? I think the answer is two, because I looked this up. The second biggest margin, 63-14 in 2013 was the biggest. Mm-hmm. That was 49 points. The second biggest was 2000 when they beat them 45 to six. That's 39 so points. They do it 10% th- of the time. I think this would be, <laughs> I think this would be uh, the third biggest in series history. I believe but they do this 10% of the time against Penn state. You would not allow me to go a 1.8% of the time Penn state being held to under 16 points. Can you can you square those for me? Like, can you explain those to the listeners how something that is way less bold for yours being a three pointer and mine having to come way down to being something that has probably only happened? It hasn't happened in in the last you know seven eight years for Penn State to be held under a touchdown. Mm-hmm. So anyway, the uh, your original one was sixteen points or whatever, under. which happened which happened literally last week. Mm-hmm. 10 points literally did last they? week. Yes. I, did, in, did, in regulation. Did Illinois in, went 18 to 10 in, re, in regulation. Yes. You think Ohio state and Penn state are going to uh, overtime tied at 10. I suspect they are not. If you'd like to make that your, your three pointer, I'll allow Ohio state and Penn state go to regulation tied at 10, go to I, overtime tied at 10. The listeners deserve better than this time. I, I, I'm sure you're, I'm sure you're about to give them something far bolder. Go ahead. Davion Henderson goes for 200 yards at least on the ground and look at yeah yeah what what tom it's 80 it's 78 yards more than your bold prediction that's that's taking it way beyond that that is ad, ad, adding points and points and it's something he's never done way except over the, what he's except for the time he did it almost never done <laughs> so he's done it 50 percent of the time he's gotten double digit uh, carries. percentage affairs we know percentages don't don't matter when it comes to boldness it's situation it's i mean if if ohio state's gonna win by 33 travion henderson is not rushing for 200 yards you know so do you want to stand by your bold predictions or do you want to show more faith in mine and, and try to can't try to say no like stand up for yourself stand up for your predictions don't try to hide behind somebody else's and tear them downtown that's pitiful that's terrible so I agree. 220 yards. 200 100. 200. <laughs> and that's it. 200. 200, wait. 200, 100 is, uh, <laughs> no, no, no. Two, <laughs> they're, they're not going to be 20,000 yards. He's not going to, he's not going to carry the ball that much. So let me see here. Um, 212. I mean, it's three points. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. All right. Wow. What an ordeal. Um, <laughs> to go take a nap <laughs> it's like you know what we were going to record another one today but let's just put that off let's just uh <laughs> call it a day um you know i just got to go complain to the wife for a while and uh just kind of blow off some steam so uh anything else tom before we go now i don't want to give people like i enjoy these shows mm-hmm. this one <laughs> oh i did not like no it's 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 just a lot it's I, I like training. Use we need to start using the a full legal name of these shows. Our increasingly <laughs> contentious bold prediction shows. Uh, yes, yes, we do. Um, I think that will do it then for this show. And uh, I look forward to a recap of perhaps some sort following the Penn State game. If you don't get one. Uh, don't worry, you will eventually on Wednesday. It just depends on who wins and who, who's going to want to be talkative. And um, we'll, we'll see how that goes. But thank you guys for listening. Thank you for watching on YouTube. If you are watching on YouTube, you know you can also listen to this via your podcast platform of choice. Just search for Buckeye Weekly and you will find it there. If you are watching on YouTube, just go ahead and hit uh, the, the notification bell. You can subscribe to the channel there at uh, youtube.com slash Buckeye Scoop. Want to thank you all for listening. Well, thank you for watching, and we will talk to you guys later.